you know, net zero benefits the school community in mul multiple ways. I think first it gives kids a real life experience in terms of taking care of their own environment. In the social activism you know, from net zero, the changing of policy both within the school district and in the city of Boulder, it puts it puts kids into real life situations where they're making real life changes. And then I think and ultimately the, the best thing about net zero is the changes it has made in terms of our sustainability, our you know, decreasing our carbon footprint, and for the whole school being more environmentally conscious. There aren't enough organizations validating the type of work these kids are doing. They often want to know how many hours of volunteer work you did, but not what your effects are. And the EPA is unique in that they really want to know that the kids did the work, for one, and then the other thing is that, that it was an effective it getting done what it wanted to get done, that you're actually making a difference, that you're impacting the world. And um, so I'm really proud to be uh, the leader of a club that's won this award twice. And then when the kids get to do down to the EPA and speak in front of all the EPA employees, they're so excited, they memorize their speeches, they dress, I get so many texts and messages, what should I wear, what should I say, how many people are gonna be there, are I really gonna stream it to the offices throughout Region 8? It's a great place, it's a great experience. You know, everybody should try to win the award. Uh, it's an exercise in looking back at what you did and were you effective. Um, the application is long, but it's, uh, it's a good thing for kids to, to work through and see, you know, how effective were we. So in 2008, we audited the waste system by basically going dumpster diving. And we found that many recyclables were being thrown away and that many um, trash items were being put in the recycling bin. We also needed to ask BVSD for a grant to receive the money to do this. Um, the last solution that we thought of was creating stations such as this so that students would know where to put their waste. One water refilling station saves about 750 bottles a week and 3,800 bottles a month. That's about two bottles a month for each student here. All the administration is really happy. EcoCycle and the Rotary who helped us get these grants are extremely ecstatic that we were able to do so well. In 2009, Fairview High School planted 59 trees that were purchased from a tree farm that went out of business. We raised $3,600 from our Adopt a Tree fundraiser program and over 150 students volunteered to plant all of the trees. So right here we have an apple tree. This one's a plum. There's a cherry, um, two peach, and a pear. Future generations of students can eat lunch here and can eat this organic fruit and it will overall help our community as it's a beautiful spot and we can provide them with this delicious organic fruit. We created it with the help of Net Zero Club as well as Fight Club which is spelled P-H-Y-T-E or Fairview's Organic Garden Club. They decided to make the name really interesting. <laughs> Fairview and Fight Club teamed up to build the organic garden. It was built two years ago in 2013 and was led by two then seniors. Um, Fairview's National Honor Society was also instrumental in helping to uh, put in this garden. There was a lot of manual labor involved. We plant a variety of fresh vegetables that are organic, that students can enjoy. And Fight Club uh, meets every Friday afternoon and maintains the garden and picks fresh fruit and vegetables for students to enjoy. The bioretention cell essentially serves to filter the water runoff from this parking lot and it filters it before it gets into Vili Lake. Uh, so basically it filters a bunch of different pollutants that come off the parking lot and 
make sure that they're not as strong and concentrated by the time they reach the water. Uh, we dug out this part of the curb and put sand and gravel and a PVC pipe that has a bunch of holes in it, as well as some mulch and another layer of soil and then a bunch of plants on top to help filter the runoff. We did an audit of the library and found that there were only about 30 environmental books, which was a major problem for students who wish to do environmental projects. Um, so we received a grant and with that a matching grant and we were able to, have, to buy many books for our library. We also were able to get books for our new class here at Fairview called Environmental Systems and Societies. Um, Hot, Flat and Crowded is one of those books for the class and they also have class copies of that. And we also got copies of Silent Spring and I think one other book that I can't remember right now. But um, so those have been very helpful for kids doing environmental research. So we looked for a, or we were aiming for a ban on both plastic and paper bags because they are equally harmful to the environment. And we eventually were able to get this um, simple idea put into the five-year master plan. And they did implement an ordinance that put a 10 cent fee on both plastic and paper bags, which resulted in approximately 10 million bags being saved every single year from going into the environment and into landfills, as well as a $300,000 revenue for the city of Boulder.